So let's do a jazz piano bebop tutorial. This is one thing that has been requested by our subscribers. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at Sonny Rollins solo over rhythm changes. Now, this is important because it's always a good idea when you're learning bebop to play the lines of great bebop players. And of course, as a bebop player, Sonny Rollins was unparalleled in that genre. So taking a look at his style of playing is a great thing, even for piano. So we're gonna take a look at the second chorus. This is the second video in our series. We did another video on the first chorus. This is the second chorus. We're gonna look at it section by section, bar by bar. It is a 32 bar tune, rhythm changes, AABA structure. So before we take a look at it, let me play the entire chorus of solo for you on the piano, and then we'll come back, dive in, and go through it each section at a time. There's Sonny Rollins second chorus of solo on rhythm changes. Let's dive in and get started looking at each of the lines separately. So the first thing you'll see is this standard lick where it's playing a B flat major seven chord. I believe that this C should be a D. It may have been a mistake in the transcription or a mistake by Sonny Rollins, but it's better just to play it as a D because it's basically starting on the seventh and ending on the seventh and then the root at the end. And that's pretty standard. Great sound. And then he just plays back and forth with a little melody and rhythm. This is neat because you've got a flat six here. He does that quite a lot on seventh chord. It's a neat sound. And then we're getting into really good bebop lines here. Here's a nice long one. So the destination note is F, and of course we talk a lot about destination notes in bebop and approaching them. In this particular case, he's playing just a B flat seven chord where this is the seventh, the sixth, and this is three and two, all of B flat seven. And then it's just an E flat major seven chord where you've got uh, the root, the fifth, and the third. Just basically a triad. And then there's an eighth note rest, and then immediately he's off into another line, and these are just passing notes. So this is under, over, under, destination because if you try to make sense of those three notes as part of an A flat seven chord, you're gonna have a hard time doing it. But really what it is is just a few passing notes to get to that destination note, which is F. And then on the B flat chord, he's just basically playing the third, the root, and the sixth. It's like a G minor seven chord. Now that's, when we get to the G7 chord, definitely an interesting lick that appears a lot in bebop where you've got that. So it doesn't make too much sense as a G7 chord, but it, it could make sense as a C minor chord. So, you know, the third to the fourth and just following the scale down. And then when he gets to here, then he's back at a G7 chord where this is the third or the B natural of a G7 chord. And then a couple of rhythm shots, and then we're on to the next chord. So let's play the whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
And then of course this note F is heading into the next line. So he's starting the next phrase on the and of four. And let's move on to that next B section now, which is just a repeat of the A in terms of changes. So then this is neat. You can play this all over the place where this is the destination note, but he's just coming down in like a whole step. So there's like a whole interval and then a half interval between the two. So then back to whole. So, so typically what players might do is instead of this D as the destination chord, it might be an E. And that's a pretty standard way of doing it, but he's going down to the D in this case. And then you've got the sharp nine, the flat nine to C minor seven, which is the destination chord. So. And then we've had this pattern before. This is like over, over, over and destination, but it's coming down the scale. And then. Not too much bebop going on there, just playing with melody, playing with rhythm. And let's move into the bridge and see what's going on there. I really like this because he's starting off with the ninth and the 13th of D7, like bebop, right? And then, and then, like I say, this is the third of D7, but he's got, doesn't make too much sense other than this is the fifth the sixth, the seventh, and the fourth, but this is a passing note heading in there. Now that's typical bebop where you've got under, over, destination, under, over, destination. And I'm not sure if you know what I mean by that. I'm talking about it's under because it's below the actual destination note in terms of pitch and then over because it's above the destination note in pitch. So, so from the beginning. And then this really nice long bebop line coming up here. So he starts off like C7. So you've got the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, the 11th, and then Passing note, under, over, and destination. And this is over, under, over, under, destination. Right, a lot of bebop players make the mistake of not hearing that over and under sound. A lot of times it's just scales to them. So you see the difference? It's like as soon as you do this under and over stuff, it starts to make more sense as far as bebop lines. Right, I'm just improvising now. So from the beginning. Yes, so this is just scale and then destination. So I would say, what's he thinking here in terms of F7? So think of this as the destination note and this is a passing note over. So I mean F7 scale and then this passing note, which is just in there to fill. You could think of that like a bebop scale. I guess it really is a bebop scale. And then you've got third and a fifth, and this is a passing note going to the seventh. 
So it's really just sticking really solidly to F7 here. And this is under, under, over, under, destination. And then scale right here. So that whole two bars on the F7 is just really sticking closely to F7 bebop scale and some passing notes. So yeah, from the beginning of the bridge. Okay, close enough for jazz. <laughs> Let's move on to the final section, which is the last A. And he's continuing that bebop line all the way through the next three bars. So that's a quite a long line where you've got an entire eight bars of, of bebop lines. So the first one. So he's sticking pretty closely to B flat seven chord here. And then this is just a G seven triad, right? Third, fifth, root, third. So that note is a little bit out, but it sounds good. Uh, let me think about that. No rhyme or reason to that, really, except that's a flat nine and then the root and the seventh, but it does make sense in terms of getting to that destination note, so. This is interesting here on this triplet, you've got the flat nine and then the sharp nine going to the third of the chord. And again, more passing notes. This is bebop. She does a lot in terms of rhythm. Yeah, I don't think this is his best lick here, but it, it sounds good in context, I think. It's a little hokey in my view, but whatever. And this is the sixth of the E flat major seventh chord, which is the destination. So this note is a passing note going to the third of the A flat seven chord. And then it's just nine, one, and six to the destination root of B flat, and then just some single quarter notes. That's interesting at the end where he's got this in the key and he sidesteps it here. Interesting. All right, let me play the solo for you one time and when I come back, I'm going to put a link to this sheet music. There's two choruses of Sonny Rollins solo that I've transcribed for you. It's great to learn it like this to practice your bebop lines based on Sonny Rollins lines. It's definitely something that seeps into your playing over time. You don't necessarily have to play the same thing as Sonny Rollins, but the rhythm and the way the bebop rolls through the whole thing and the feel of it just kind of gets into your soul a little bit. So when you start to improvise on your own, you're doing a lot of that under, over, or under, under, over destination kind of pattern. Okay, so that's really what improvising is all about, just kind of taking that feel, understanding the harmony behind it and where the notes are going. So let me play the solo once more, and then we'll come back, I'll post a link to the sheet music.
here's the second course of Sonny Rollins' solo again. I'm going to post a link at the end to the first chorus where we analyze that. Let me post a link to the sheet music up here in the corner. Just go grab that, download it. It's the best way to learn bebop is basically practicing other people's solo lines like Sonny Rollins. Okay, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And when you go to jazzmental.com to check out that sheet music, check out the other sheet music and things that are at jazzmental.com. There's a lot going on there, and I hope you spend some time there looking over all of the things that we have to help make you a better player. If you like this video, again, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just hit the little bell when you do, because you'll be notified of all the upcoming videos that we're making. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.